Um, we only have two sections left to learn. Um, and this section is called extended rotation. I think you have notes at the end of your three ring binder that says extended rotation. And if you don't, um, as you can see, these problems don't take, they take a, a, a long ways to teach it, but there isn't much on each page. So basically we're gonna learn extended rotation. And what that means is we are gonna find the volume Um, but before you guys, um, let's say the picture looked like this and you rotated around the X axis or you rotated it against the Y axis, what happens if it's not the X or the Y axis? What happens if you rotate it around a line Y equals a negative two? So there are four different scenarios depending on where your picture is. So these are the steps. The first thing you want to do is you need to draw a picture. The second thing you want to do is find your limit. The third thing you want to do is decide if there's a hole or no hole in your picture when you're rotating it around that specific line. And you have a new line now that you have to use. And how does that work? Um, and we're using disks to rotate it. So the volume AX has to equal pi R squared. We're using disks to do this. Okay, rotation below the region. What happens if the rotation is below the region? So here's the first picture. This is a swoosh right here to the left too. And it looks like that. Y equals e to the x is an exponential curve, and it looks like that. Basically, this is in between the two curves, but you're trying to find the volume. So whenever you're finding the volume, you need to rotate it around um, a line. And the line is y equals a negative 2. So notice that the rotation, the line is below the, your picture. It's below your picture. Your picture is above what you're rotating. And imagine this shape right here, that shaded shape, revolving around this dotted line. If you took that shape and revolved it around that line, would there be a hole or no hole if you rotated that against that y equals a negative two? Of course there would be a hole. Everybody see the huge space in between the line and the shaded area? So if there is a hole, you need to do pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. If there is no hole, you just use pi r squared. But most of these are going to have a hole in it when you rotate it around the axis. OK, so let's keep going here. I'm just going to set it up. So the first thing I did was I drew a picture. The second thing I'm going to do is figure out where they cross each other. Um, so you're going to use your intersect button and you're going to put y1, the square root of y1, you're going to put in the square root of x plus 2. y2, you're going to put in e to the x on your graphing calculator. You're going to hit the intersection button to figure out that this point right here is um, a negative, nope, it's not a negative. It's a positive 0.4475, and it's right here, 0.4475, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this other one down here is a negative 1.980974, 
comma, 0 0.1379, and so on. Um, this other one up here is 0.4475, and so on, and this is 1.56. When you hit your intersection button, you should never, ever um, go out to three decimal places for your limit. It's going to change your answers. you got to make sure your limits are all the way out. So instead of writing them out again and you're, you have a time test, all you have to say is limit A is the negative 1.980974. It's the X values. And the B is the positive... 0.4475 and so on is your B value. Then you have to use this formula because there's a hole when you rotate it against the Y equals a negative 2. So this is what you have to do. You have to square it. Everybody see the squares? You need a pi out here because they both have a pi minus the other little radius squared BX. Which one is the outer radius? It's this one. It's the square root of x plus 2. The inner radius is that one, which is e to the x. OK, now comes the next part. If it would have just been y equals 0, which would have been this one, you would have, that would have been the answer. But since it's a negative 2, you need to add to this and add to this. Since it's below the x-axis, 2 plus the square root of x plus 2, and 2 plus e to the x squared. They're going to ask you just to plug that into your calculator to get your volume. And the volume, you might want to do this to see if you can plug this all into your calculator. The volume for this one is going to be 19.724 units cubed. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to maybe draw another picture. As you can see, the shapes are staying the same. Um, it looks like this, and it looks like this. Again, it looks like this. I'm just keeping with the same picture. And now your line is y equals 2. Now your rotation is above the region that you're rotating. It's above the re region. Again, my limits are the same, A and B. It's the A and B up there. There's still a pi, and you're still going to do um, R squared and R squared BX. When you rotate this shape around this line, you can see that there's a hole. So that's why I have to do pi big R squared and pi little r squared. Since it's below the line that you're trying to rotate it around, it's 2 minus the outer one. And the outer one ends up being, now it switches because it's going around that line and the outer one is e to the x. And the inner one around that is the square root one. And then you put it into your calculator and you're going to get 8.535 units cubed. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, this is important to know this for the AP test. It doesn't matter that this is a negative and this is a positive, notice that they're both positive because it's the distance of that to that. It's a positive two no matter what. It doesn't matter if this is a negative two. It's the distance. Um, so they're always going to be a positive number right there, always a positive number because the distance is a positive two. Um, and if, it's, if, if the line is below the shape, it's a plus sign. If it's an above the shape, it's a minus sign. Okay, now the next page. Rotation to the left of the region or to the right of the region. So, we'll just do another one here. If 
you notice this, this is the exact same thing, except they got the X alone instead of the Y alone. The graph looks still exactly the same. And the same thing down here. Um, maybe I'll show you how they got that. So I want to go back to this page and I'm just going to go up here and show you to get X alone, I would have squared both sides. And then to get X alone, I would have subtracted two. So that's how they got X is equal to Y squared minus two. And then over here, Y equals E to the X. All you have to do is ln both sides, ln of y equals ln e to the x. I ln both sides. So ln of y equals, if I brought that x out in front, it just is going to be an x because ln e is the natural log of y. So that's where they're coming up with those two weird equations on the next page, if you're wondering. So that's how they got this, and they got this. But in order to graph it, it needs to be in Y form. Okay, now we're going to rotate it around a vertical line. And the vertical line is going to be out here at X equals a negative 3. We need to use the Y values because when you rotate it around a vertical line, these points are the Y values of those two intersections. Points. And it's always the smaller one is the A and the bigger one is the B. So that's where those two points where they intersected came from. So those are your Y values. And instead of writing them both again, just put A and B down. It's just as easy. So everybody see I'm coloring in the shape right now. What happens if you rotated that around that vertical line? Would there be a hole or no hole? There would be a hole. So you have to use pi big R squared minus little r squared dx. Okay, so I'm going to erase that, and I'm going to put that minus that, and I'm going to fill it in. Okay, notice that the line is a vertical line. It's a negative 3. That's going to be a 3 there, and that's going to be a 3 there. The only thing is, is it a positive or a negative? If it's to the if the rotation is to the left of the region, you put a plus sign right there. To the left of the region, you put a plus sign right there. And then the outer radius would be this one, and that would be the natural log of y, and the inner one would be the y squared minus two. And you can see I made a mistake because the dx isn't supposed to be a dx, Everything's in terms of y, so that needs to be terms of dy. When you plug this into your calculator, you can still use x's. You do not have to use y's, but you're going to get 15.539 units cubed. And the last one, what happens if it's x equals 1 and it's to the right of the region? You're going to use your same limits. You're going to use a pi, because remember we're using circles. If the rotation is to the right of the region, you're going to use your parentheses squared minus parentheses squared dy. If it's to the right of the region and it's x equals 1, you know, you put a 1 here and you put a 1 here. And if you're rotating this shape, I'm coloring it in, around this dotted line, the outer one would be that one, and the outer one is the y squared minus 1, I meant y squared minus 2, and the inner one is the natural log of y. This is a positive, this one needs to be a negative since it's rotation to the right of the region. And if you solve that one, you're going to get 12.721 units cubed. If you're not getting the right answer is because you cannot round these limits. You have to plug those all into your calculator and go into FNINT and you should get it.
Okay, um, we're gonna do an extra problem. I just thought if you wanted to read your notes and maybe try a problem, you can. I thought I'd do the extra problem on a separate um, set of notes so you can see how to do one example at least. Um, before I do this extra problem on a separate day so that you can uh, maybe review it, maybe just watch the notes the first day and maybe do the extra problem the second day, I'm gonna give you two days to do this assignment anyway. So um, if it's above or if it's to the right, if that line, if that line is above or to the right, if that line, I'm talking about the line here, if that line is above or to the right, you're going to have a negative sign. It's going to be the number minus that inner outer radius. The number minus the inner outer radius. If that line is to the left or below, then you're going to have the number plus the radius, the equation of the radius. This is important. This is talking about the line. So let's just go back one more time and I'm done. If the line, if the line is below it, see that the line is below the shape, it's a plus. Do you see that the line is below the shape? It's a plus. Let's see. Let's go back and see if I wrote it right. If the line, if the line is below it, it's a plus. Do you see that? So that's something, this is really important to understand this right here. 